Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to continue working on the RPG tutorial. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to add a little bit more into our uh, tile map here. So we can go into the collidable actually, and we can start adding some more pieces to start to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to start off just by adding uh, more of this river here. And then we're also going to want to add the bottom pieces to this river. So let's just work on that like that. And then we can try just adding some green space all around it for now. Oh wait, actually, yeah, that's one other thing. So this is the collidable layer. So I'm just going to remind you that we need to go back to the background layer so we can focus on it and see what blocks are in which layer. So you can see here that these are actually incorrect right now. We want to be able to walk on those blocks, so we'll need to go and erase these. And then if we click on the background layer, then we can just uh, add them back. So yeah, this is actually the correct layer to be working with right now. And we can add all of these so that our character is actually able to walk on that. And I'm just going to select a large amount so that we can add just a little bit more all around here. So we have some areas that you can walk on. And you can see I actually put these blocks on the wrong layer too, since I have been focusing on this. So you can see these are also in the collidable. So we need to remove that so that if we go to the background, we can copy all of this. Or actually for variation, we can copy this in right there. And then I can just do that to keep up with the variation. So yeah, we can just keep on doing that a little bit to sort of make the scene look pretty nice. And yeah, I also will want to add just a little bit more to this river up here, like that, and like that. And now that we have all of this done we can actually get into some new stuff for this tutorial so the first thing that we're going to want to do is to make it that when we're playing and we go over here we actually reach the edge of the world because right now we can just keep walking and walking forever so in order to do that we're going to use another feature of the cinema machine so go to the virtual camera that you have right here and at the bottom here you can see that we can add an extension so we want to right off the bat add a cinema machine confiner so this is going to be really great because what we can do is we can just add a new shape that will allow us to confine the size of the camera so let's just create an empty object and also put it inside the camera and then let's actually rename it to camera border and then what we can do is we can add a new, let me just check right here, yeah, add a new polygon collider is what we want. And make sure it's 2D, of course. So you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see, but in green, a shape appeared here. And then what you can do is you can click on the edit collider, and then you can go into the corners and drag them out. So once I do that, I will have my shape that we are colliding with. And then you can do this however you want and make your scenes however you want, but this will just be really nice for you to be able to confine your scene to a certain size. And what will happen now is if I control S and then play, oh, whoops, I still need to, first of all, make sure that this is triggered. And then when we go back to the camera, we just want to drag this uh, camera border in right here. Okay, so if I click play, let's see this in action. So now if I go up over here, you can see that we reached the corner of the screen and well, the character is still able to move out right now, but the camera will correctly uh, position itself, which is a really nice effect to have here. So yeah, awesome. 
Now all we have to do is fill in this little corner right here, and we technically have our first scene completed. All right. All right, perfect. So I'm just going to control S for that, and then we can move on to the next thing. So the next thing that I want to work on is adding another layer into the grid over here. So we can go to the 2D objects and then tile map and actually just insert that there and get rid of that grid. And then we can rename this to foreground. So what we're going to be doing is adding a tree into our scene and we want the leaves on top of the tree to actually be in front of the player. So in order to make that work, what we need to do is we need to make the Z layer negative 10 because that will be closer to the camera. And if we go to our character, you can see that their Z position is negative one. So then the foreground will be in front. And in order to make this more clear, we can actually add the tree in right here. So the stump, we want to make that collidable so you can actually uh, collide with the tree. So I'll just put it here for now. But what we want to happen is have the top of the tree be in the foreground. So let's only select these top blocks. Okay. And then if I place that, you can see that when I go to the foreground, it shows this. And when I go to collidable, it shows that. And in the background, it shows all of that. So let's try pressing play and see if that worked out. So you can see that I sort of collide with the tree, or the tree stump at least, but if I go up behind it, I'm actually behind the tree. So just with a little bit of working with the tile maps, we're able to make a lots of new functions for this game. And another really easy way for us to add variation is to actually look over here in the tile palette at the different rocks that we have. And if we go into Collidable, we can really quickly just place down a few different rocks inside of our scene over here. And then if I press play, we can just test it out to make sure it's working. So yeah, now we also have rocks that uh, you can run into. And it looks like you're standing in front of them correctly over here. So yeah. And the last thing that we're going to do for this tutorial is actually add our first mob into this game. So the first mob that we're going to be adding is actually the slime. So we're going to need to do some work first of all on these sprites over here. So let's first of all make sure to change this to multiple sprite mode and then click on the sprite editor and then just click apply. So you can see here we have four different frames for the slime where it's just sort of I guess bouncing around or moving around, however you want to say it. But we'll do what we did in the previous episode where we did the grid size by cell count. I just find this to be a lot easier than the other way. And then we can just make sure there's four different columns. And then if we click slice, you can see here that we have sliced it. And then actually this time what we need to do is we need to uh, drag down this uh, box because there's a lot of empty space up here that can actually cause us some trouble in the future. So what we want to do is we just want to drag all of these down to the same size over here and then that will be perfect. All right. And then the other thing is we want to change this to point filter mode just like we have done with every single object in this game just about. So yeah then what we can do is we can actually drag this guy into the scene and see what happens oh i don't think that worked let me try again i'll drag him over here and yeah so we actually need to set up the animation just like we did before so i'll just do the uh blue slime since there are also the other colors for the animation as well. And for now, we're just going to keep this in the same folder, but eventually we should move that. All right, let's actually drag this guy onto the scene 
and click play. Okay, so you can see right here that he's kind of, he kind of looks alive. He's not really moving around and doing anything, but I will say the animation looks a little bit fast. So what we can do to quickly fix that is actually double click right here and you can see that this animator comes up. So whenever you're working with animations, no matter if it's in 2D or 3D or anything, you can use this animator right here, which was automatically created for us, and open it up. And it has a state machine here that we can work with, which I won't get into right now, but the basic idea is right when the game loads up, it's going to load up this animation. And we have some different uh, attributes that we can change here. So what I want to do is I just want to take the speed and change it to something a little bit more reasonable, like 0.5, because we want to see the slime is sort of resting. Yeah, just like that. So you can see the slime uh, looks a little bit more natural now, I think, and you can play around with it and set any value that you want for yourself. But yeah, I'll just set, set it to 0.5 for now. All right. So we now have the slime in this game here, but we want to actually make it into its own object. So we can create a new folder and just call it the mobs folder for now. All right, open that up and then drag in the slime over the slime prefab over here. And we can rename this to blue slime. All right. And actually, if the name doesn't change right here, what you can do is you can open the prefab and then change the name right here to blue slime as well. And then just click rename file, just so everything's set up correctly. All right, perfect. So we now have a blue slime that we can drag into the scene wherever we want to. And yeah, so that will be it for this tutorial. We'll work more on this in future episodes where we're going to uh, add movement and uh, actually start working on the battle system and everything like that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.